Hey, welcome to Inside Gaming. I'm Brian. It's weekend roundup time. So it's no secret that games are getting bigger and bigger these days. I'm not just talking about the scope of the modern AAA game. I'm actually talking about the actual file sizes. They are massive. And the latest offender, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, may have gone too far with a lot of players. As GameSpot pointed out, the reboot that came out last year is now an absolute beast. It's approaching 200 gigs, which is insane. After two patches at the end of last month, the game now weighs in at 180 gigs on PC and over 185 gigs on the PS4 and the Xbox One. This is nuts because Infinity Ward said initially that you'd only need about 175 gigs, you know, nothing, of hard drive space on the PC. At the time, they explained that this would include space for future updates. They've obviously blown way past that. Players are getting mad too. One user on the Modern Warfare subreddit, Storm Viper, wrote, for someone who has a basic 500 gig PS4, this game is a joke for updates. I have to delete 10 gigs of data, even though I have 90 gigs free. Yeah, that sounds weird, dude. Another player, Nino21, wrote, I already had to install FIFA 20, Overwatch, Warframe, and Borderlands 3 just for this one game. It's an effing joke at this point. Obviously, the addition of the Battle Royale Royale mode Warzone also spiked things up a bit too when it comes to file sizes. Infinity Ward has actually apologized for the size of the file updates. On Twitter back in February, production director Paul Haley wrote, we're constantly trying to fight back against both download size and disk footprint, and in this case, we're resending new asset packs to reduce the overall size of the game. He also said they're making moves to keep future file sizes lower, and they're planning on giving us tools to manage the data better and not keep the DLC we don't want. He wrapped up by saying, I'm very conscious of the overall size of Modern Warfare, and we're doing what we can to minimize this for everyone. Thanks. Feels like you're not doing everything you can, dude. I don't know, since they've added Warzone, also those games need constant updates, which is gonna lead to the game getting bigger and bigger. It's also worth asking, how is this sustainable and will hard drives and solid state drives keep pace? Or is this just gonna be a situation where we can only have one or two games on our console, considering that Modern Warfare is approaching half the hard drive space of a base PS4? Some claim that as we go into the next generation that file sizes will actually be smaller. The YouTube site Gaming Bolt said that thanks to techniques like asset duplication that devs can use, we will see files shrink. Honestly, I'll believe it when I see it because nothing over the last 20 years has shown me that developers are interested in compressing files. So we will see. All right, moving on. So here is something you don't hear a lot. EA did something cool. I know, it's big news. Recently, the head of EA said their upcoming games for the current generation of consoles can be upgraded free to run on the next generation. Now, we're not sure if that means smart delivery, like what Microsoft is doing, or backwards compatibility, or what. Here's the quote from COO Blake Jorgensen. He told investors this week, this year, the phasing includes the effect of revenue recognition from the games we are launching for the current current generation of consoles that can also be upgraded free for the next generation. I don't know if he means like we're going to upgrade them so we know we're going to lose a little bit of money or what. I don't know. Whatever it means, it's good news. It sounds like this is going to be a much smoother transition this time into the next generation, mainly because hopefully we won't have to buy all new games when we get a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. Uh, fingers crossed. Speaking of EA, let's talk about Jedi Fallen Order. Pretty well received when it released back in November. New Star Wars game that's good is always welcome. Now EA has confirmed more games are on the way. In an earnings call, EA CEO Andrew Wilson said that Fallen Order is the, quote, first title in an entirely new franchise. Now, hmm, of course, the game introduced a new character to the Star Wars canon, Cal Kestis, a former Jedi Padawan who was in hiding after Order 66. Most of the Jedis got killed. The game was a hit. Last year, CFO Blake Jorgensen, man, he was COO in the last story, a man of many titles. He said the game significantly beat our expectations expectation and was expected to sell 10 million units. That almost always means a sequel is coming. Cyberpunk 2077 isn't out until September, but it has been rated by the ESRB and surprise, it's M for Mature. I know you guys are stunned. Yes, I know, it's M for Mature. I know that's a shocker to all of us, but the rating summary did give us a few more raunchy details about the game. Uh, it sounds like its customization is pretty in depth because um, you can even customize your character's genitals. Finally, have the you know what you always wanted. 
whatever that is. God bless. You can customize it. Do whatever you want. Specifically, it says customization can include depictions of breasts, buttocks, and genitalia, as well as various size and combinations of genitals. Oh, and of course, you can have sex with other main characters and NPCs like prostitutes, but come on. GTA broke that mold years ago. All right, are we getting new skate and Tony Hawk games? It sure sounds like that based on an interview that pro skater Jason Dill gave to the Nine Club podcast. Dill said that EA asked if he'd like to be involved in a Skate 3 game, but it was for mobile, to which he replied, look, no big deal. No one wants your stupid mobile version of Skate 3. Make Skate 4 already because like, just do it. Well said, Jason Dill. Well said. Uh, in that same interview, he also broke the news that a new Tony Hawk Pro Skater game is due this year, and he knows that because he contributed to a soundtrack. So I love it when people involved, like voice actors and stuff, just leak this accident. It is the best. They just like run their mouths, and this is how we learn like so much news. All right, time for a five second review. This reminds me of back in junior high, this kid like slugged me in the stomach and I just, I told the teacher. All right, let's talk about the games coming out next week. First up, Deep Rock Galactic is a one to four player co-op first person shooter featuring badass space dwarves, 100% destructible environments, procedurally generated caves, and endless hordes of alien monsters. Sounds awesome. It's been an early access, but the official launch for PC and Xbox One is May 13th. Next up, Signs of the Sojourner. In this narrative card game about relationships and communication, navigate conversations in a colorful world reminiscent of our own. Learn and grow through the cards you choose to play. Who will you become? Your deck is your character, reflecting your experiences and shaping your relationships. Make decisions about who your character is in this world, pushing forward with the cards you're dealt. You take over your mother's store after her death, traveling to diverse locations in order to acquire goods for your shop. Along the way, encounter optimistic stories, compassionate characters, and delightful surprises in a world where travel is difficult and climate change has made life hard. Well, they just threw climate change right there at the end. It comes to PC May 14th. Next up is Ion Fury, a true old school first person shooter from 3D Realms set in a cyberpunk metropolis. Shelly Bombshell Harrison takes on a quest to slay evil transhumanist mastermind Dr. Jadis Eskel in the streets of Neo DC. She leaves a trail of carnage throughout huge multi-path levels filled with gigantic explosions, more secret areas than we can count, and inhuman foes behind every corner. There's no regenerating health here. Stop taking cover and start running and gunning. Shelly's crusade to take down Heskel's army will see her leave destruction in her wake with a wide arsenal of weapons, complete with alternate fire modes and different ammo types. Ion Fury laughs at the idea of mandatory checkpoints and straight paths through shooting galleries, but just because this is a true old school first person shooter doesn't mean they've ignored all the good new stuff the last two decades have brought. Headshots? Oh yeah. More physics and interactivity? You bet. So it looks pretty cool. It comes to PS4, Xbox One, and Switch May 14th. Next up, Those Who Remain. As the lights go out, the embers of darkness are stoked in the sleepy town of Dormant. Whispers of disappearances carry through the town as a burgeoning, uneasy, and irrational fear begins to spread, and darkness comes to be an unwelcome reflection. Some mistakes should never happen, not when your life is complete, and yet they do. Edward had the good life, a beautiful wife, perfect little girl, yet finds himself several whiskeys down and driving through the town of Dormont to end his secret affair in a bid to fix his mistakes. As he pulls into the Golden Oak Motel, he is unaware just how much this night will change his life. Those Who Remain places you in an up-close psychological horror story set in Dormont, confront the uncomfortable horrors reflected by the darkness, survive the night of Dormont as Edward is confronted with a test of his sanity, morality, and the shadows of evil that lurk below. It comes to PS4, PC, and Xbox One May 15th. And finally, Hatsune Miku, Project Diva Megamix. Take the stage, the hit rhythm game series returns with exciting new features. Mix it up and choose from two playable modes, traditional button control based arcade mode or the new motion control based mix mode featuring fan favorite classics and new hits choose from over 100 songs for endless rhythm fun take advantage of the new customization features choose from over 300 costumes and design custom t-shirts in the new t-shirt editor create playlists for your favorite music videos it comes to the switch 
May 15th. That's all I got for you this week. Guys, I hope you're doing well in quarantine. I know it can get, you know, a little frustrating. Hang in there. We're going to get through this. I'll see you next week. It's going to be fine. I'll probably see you sooner than next week because we got more videos. Call of Duty Warzone has gotten really popular really quickly. As of earlier this month, it had grown to 50 million players since it launched, making it one of the fastest growing free-to-play games in the entire industry. But it's got a problem. Cheating. Like all these other games, some PS4 players have 